Most archaeological discoveries are old bits of ceramics, coins, and weapons. They're interesting if you're an archaeologist, but not quite so interesting for everybody else. You won't see any of those discoveries in this video. This video is all about the discoveries that fit into the category of weird, wild, and wonderful. Discoveries that you might not even believe existed if you hadn't seen them with your own eyes. Let's check them out. Pretzels are among the favorite bar snacks of millions of people all over the world, and of course, are enjoyed at home too. You don't have to be at a bar to eat them. People have been enjoying the snack for centuries, and the recipe has barely changed since the day they were invented. We know that because archaeologists found a few 250-year-old pretzels in Germany in 2015. Nobody throws away a good pretzel, so it's likely that these few, found in the city of Regensburg, were discarded due to the fact they appear to have been burned during the cooking process. It's the fact that they were burned almost to a crisp that helped them to survive for so long. A normal pretzel would have crumbled to dust long ago. According to Dorothy Ott, who is both the spokesperson for the Bavarian Office for Historical Conservation and something of a pretzel expert, the only difference between these pretzels and the ones you'd buy today is that the older ones were apparently much smaller. They might not be the most significant find of all time, but they've still gone on display at the city's historical museum. When Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79, the residents of Pompeii had no warning. There was barely any time to flee, and most of the people caught in the volcanic eruption were frozen in time in the precise moment they were in when the ash fell upon them. A few managed to get away, though, which makes our next discovery all the more tragic. It's the remains of a man who appears to have successfully escaped the burning city, only to perish when an enormous rock fell on his head. Archaeologists think the rock might have been a door jam. It wouldn't have been easy for the man to get away from the pyroclastic flow in the first place. An examination of his leg bones has revealed he was dealing with a severe infection at the time of his death, so he wouldn't have been moving quickly. He certainly won't have been the only person to have lost his life in the panicked attempt to flee the chaos but his death might well have been the most unfortunate. Luck really wasn't on his side that day. In recent years, we've seen a trend for people wanting to make beer the old-fashioned way. Rather than buying and drinking the mass-produced kind you'll find in most bars, if anyone wants to take that idea to the extreme, they should try following this 5,000-year-old beer recipe that was discovered in China in May 2016. The recipe is interesting for more reasons than just the fact it demonstrates that the ancient Chinese enjoyed beer. It also proves that these brewers were part of a large-scale trade network that imported essential ingredients from thousands of miles away. To make this beer, brewers would need broom corn millet, barley, a second form of barley known as Job's Tears, and tubers. It's the barley that poses the biggest historical problem. The ancient Chinese didn't start growing barley for food until the beginning of the Han Dynasty, 3,000 years after this recipe was written. The only place it could have come from is Western Eurasia. The obvious difficulties in obtaining the ingredient mean that beer was probably reserved for special occasions and might have been an exotic beverage that the rich and powerful shared with their friends as a symbol of their status. Archaeologists in Peru are used to opening fascinating tombs, and they've seen many different types of grave goods that almost nothing surprises them. These metal claws, however, are unlike anything they've seen before or since. The surprising artifacts were found inside the tomb of a Mocha nobleman at the Huaca de la Luna archaeological site in July 2014. The claws are really just gloves with metal fixtures attached to them to simulate the appearance of feline claws, and archaeologists are at a loss to explain what they were used for. They wouldn't have been much use in a conventional combat situation, so it's possible they played a part in an unusual ritual. Alternatively, perhaps there was an ancient mocha sport similar to boxing, in which combatants wore claws rather than boxing gloves. They're approximately 1,500 years old. It's known that the Mocha culture had a strong interest in the arts, 
so it's not out of the question that these were just fashion garments worn by the tomb's occupant. The civilization existed in Peru before the Inca and disappeared for unknown reasons. Sometimes when archaeologists are totally stuck and have nowhere else to turn, they ask the public for help. With that in mind, perhaps you might be the right person to help crack this 1,200-year-old Pictish puzzle. Experts have so far been unable to piece together these stone fragments, which were once part of a cohesive chiseled design on a monument in Scotland. The monument was erected on the east coast of the Scottish Highlands, somewhere close to the beginning of the 9th century, but has subsequently been smashed to pieces in the many years since then. The current theory is that the Picts carved intricate designs into the sandstone to mark their conversion to Christianity, but that can't be proven until the pieces are reassembled in the correct order. It doesn't help that a self-important local resident destroyed the largest remaining part of the monument in 1676 and etched a new inscription across the top of it with his own name and the names of his three wives. The broken monument is known as the Hilton of Cadbull Stone, and one day, with the assistance of the general public and strangers working together through the internet, we'll be able to see it as it looked on the day it was carved. Seeking the truth behind the stories contained in the Bible is a common objective for archaeologists in Jerusalem, and in 2004 they made one of their most significant breakthroughs. In the Silwan district of the city, they discovered what they believe to be the remains of the Siloam Pool. According to the Bible, this is where Jesus miraculously restored a blind man's sight. It's also known as a fact that the Jews used the pool for ritual immersions for much of the first century until the nearby temple was destroyed by Romans in the year 70. The pool has been buried under a stone road for well over a thousand years, but when archaeologists lifted the stones, they were amazed to find that water still runs through the site. The fact that the remains of a road between the pool and Temple Mount have also been discovered makes them all the more sure that this is definitely Siloam. Part of the site is obscured by old sewage pipes that haven't been in use since the 1960s. So one day it might be possible to remove these old pipes and fully excavate the site. We're staying in Jerusalem for a moment because another discovery was made there that delighted archaeologists in 2017. It's an ancient Roman theater found very close to the city's western wall. The remarkably large building was found entirely by accident. The archaeologists responsible for the dig had hoped to explore the depths of the western wall and weren't expecting to find anything else in the process. Given the sheer size of the theater, which includes rows of seats, the stage, and even the orchestra area, it's amazing that it had never been found before. The former performance venue was buried beneath more than 70 tons of dirt and probably hadn't seen the light for more than 1,700 years. The existence of a Roman theater in this part of the city has been known about for years, and several archaeological expeditions of the past have spent years looking for it without any success. It was likely destroyed along with much of the rest of the city during the aforementioned Roman invasion in the year 70. With only 200 seats, it looks like it was the ideal place to enjoy a small, intimate performance. Many human bad habits have been with us for thousands of years. One of them is our unfortunate predilection for fast food. They might not have had branches of McDonald's or KFC in Pompeii before the volcano erupted, but they did have their mopoliums. At these elaborately decorated street food stalls, vendors would bring food they'd cooked at home, heat it up at the site, and serve it to hungry passers-by. Typical meat snacks that a customer might enjoy included duck, rooster, and chicken. While many of the still visible frescoes on some of the thermopoliums that have been uncovered so far contain images of the food on offer, several also include paintings of fierce-looking dogs on leads. Rather than being another menu option, it's thought that these were warnings to thieves who might otherwise be tempted to try robbing the stalls. Based on the pots and jugs found behind the counters of the stalls, it appears that customers had the choice of washing down their meal with either water or wine. 
One of the thermopoleums is in such good condition that it's being fully restored and may start serving food to tourists before the end of 2021. King Herod is a notorious figure in the Bible because of his attempt to get rid of the infant Christ by way of mass infanticide. While evidence of the deeds ascribed to him in the Bible is scant, he was a genuine historical figure who once ruled Judea, and in December 2014, archaeologists claimed to have found the entrance to his palace. This is certainly a passageway fit for a king. It's a colossal corridor with many arches leading directly to Herod's hilltop palace. Back when the king was alive, it led directly into the courtyard, but it appears to have been backfilled after Herod passed away, at which time the palace became a burial monument. Aside from the entrance, the archaeologists also found a vestibule covered in painted frescoes and what appears to be a series of tunnels dug and used by squads of Jewish guerrilla fighters during the revolt against Roman occupation in the second century. The Israeli government wants to fully excavate the corridor and allow tourists access to the palace through it, but that might prove to be problematic due to its location in the disputed West Bank. Tastes in jewelry have changed extensively over the centuries, so finding skeletons with rings on their toes might not sound particularly unusual. What makes them unusual, though, are the facts that the rings are made of copper alloy, the skeletons in question are 3,300 years old, and the discoveries were made in Egypt. No burial practice like this has ever been recorded in Egypt. And when you consider how many ancient Egyptian tombs and caskets have been opened during the past two centuries, that's quite significant. The fact the rings have been left on the skeletons implies that they were probably worn while their owners were alive. But it doesn't help us to work out why they were worn. Perhaps the location of the discovery is important. The remains were found in Amarna, which was once known as Akhetaten, and was briefly the capital of Egypt. It was abandoned after the death of Pharaoh Akhetaten himself, who was posthumously reviled for his attempts to turn his people into sun worshippers. It's possible that these rings are tokens of this short-lived religious belief. The individuals don't appear to have been wealthy or socially significant, so a religious explanation is probably the best guess. Of all the places you might find a whale graveyard, the middle of a desert must be the most unlikely. Nevertheless, that's where one turned up in February 2014. Perhaps it's not so surprising when you consider the full history of the area, though. This is the Atacama Desert in Chile, and when these unfortunate whales passed away five million years ago, it was all underwater. While that might explain how the whales got here, it doesn't explain why they died together in such a large number. And that's the question that experts have been wrestling with ever since. The best explanation that they've come up with thus far is that the whales were part of a mass stranding event that was caused by them ingesting toxic algae. The first whale bones to be found here were discovered in 2010, which led to the region being nicknamed Whale Hill, but the full extent of the graveyard wasn't known until the formal 2014 study. Oddly, the whale remains are distributed across four different fossil levels separated by thousands of years, implying that we're actually looking at multiple mass stranding events that occurred in the same area. Roman historical texts are full of mentions of the bloodthirsty nature of the Celts. The Romans were known to exaggerate a little when it came to discussing their enemies, but this 2015 discovery suggests that they might have had a point in this instance. At an Iron Age archaeological site close to Winterbourne, Kingston in England, a grisly collection of hybrid animals was found buried in storage pits beneath ancient Celtic roundhouses. Among the gruesome creations are sheep with multiple heads and cows with the legs of horses stitched to them. The creations are almost inexplicable but it's likely that they were intended as offerings to the gods. In some cases, sacrificed human remains were found alongside the Frankenstein's monster-like animals. The pits were dug around 2,000 years ago, with the animal and human offerings placed at the bottom 
and then covered with dirt, before being used to store grain and other household goods. So many animal remains were found in some of the pits that archaeologists speculate the sacrifices might have been an annual event. Aside from being bloody, the practice was also wasteful. It involved throwing away better meat than the households probably enjoyed for the rest of the year. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!